Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about my interview experience at Tower Research Capital for the role of SD2. So as many of you might know that Tower Research Capital is a high frequency trading firm, which specializes in doing quantitative trading and other investment strategies. And TRC has offices, basically it is headquartered in New York City, but it has offices in Montreal, London, Amsterdam, Singapore, India and Hong Kong as well. And there are other locations as well. Like if you want to know more about Tower Search Capital, you can actually go to their website and see. But yeah, the website is this www.towerresearch.com. So anyways, coming back to our point. So my in India, basically they have offices at three locations. I think it is in Gurgaon, Gift City and in Mumbai. So my interview was held for the role of SD2 for the Gurgaon office. So let's jump into it like how i got the interview call and everything so i was reached out by a recruiter the recruiter was not from tower search capital but from a third party firm which does like they are firms which actually recruiting firms which just specialize in doing the hiring and most of the high frequency trading firms they do not do hiring by themselves but they have the partnerships with these recruiting firms and they do the hiring on behalf of them so i was reached out by one such person only from a recruiting firm and they eventually told me that this is the role these are the job responsibilities these are the tech stack for which uh, they are looking to hire people i mean mostly the tech stack was on c plus plus only and since my background was a good fit because i was working as a c plus plus developer only at my previous company which was de shaw so they were interested in me and i was also interested in you know applying for trc so i eventually decided to go ahead with it and so i sent my resume to her and she applied at trc on behalf of me and eventually my resume was shortlisted and i received the online assessment test link so let's see what the online assessment test comprised of so the online assessment uh, test which i had received was basically a hacker rank test it was a 90 minutes test it comprised of three sections each section was time constrained and you cannot skip between sections like if you are on section one so you cannot skip and go to section two or section three you have to attempt section one only in the given time which you are allotted like each section has allotted time and once the time allotted for a particular section has elapsed you will then move to the next section next section and once you have moved to a next section you cannot you know come back to any other like the previous section so if you have once you have moved past one particular section you cannot come back to it so section one comprised of only mcqs the mcqs were based on c plus plus data structures and algorithms operating systems computer networks computer architecture and time and space complexity of common ds and algo things so these were mostly the topics on which mcqs were based on then there the sec there was section two which comprised of two debugging questions and so the debugging questions were like normal coding problems only like there was a problem statement which was explained and then there was a solution given as well like a coding a solution was coded there and you have to find out that what was the error in that particular solution you have to fix that error and pass all the test cases so that was the section two it comprised of two questions on this debugging thing i mean this uh, like this uh, debugging questions i have also seen in coordination online assessment tests i mean i i'm not sure whether they to take these kind of assessment now or not but back in i think 2016 or 17 when i had appeared for coordination so once i had cleared the round one which was the online assessment test which comprised of data structures and algorithms the round two was on debugging questions only but anyways then there was section three which consisted of two coding questions like two data structures and algorithm questions the questions were hard i mean they seemed hard to me both of them were graph problems i do not remember the problems exactly but one of the problem i solved it using floyd washell algorithm so in case you want to get a feel of how hard coding problems are asked at tower research in tower research online assessment tests or you know get a feel of the problem statements they ask so you can actually attempt a test which is public on hacker earth like uh, this test was basically taken by trc back in 2018 it is publicly available on hacker earth and i had also created a video on uh, this test like i had explained one of the questions which was a dynamic programming questions you can actually watch that video as well it was this video multi-dimensional dp this was asked in trc okay so that question is there in this test as well i think this that particular dp question can be solved using three dimensional dp two dimensional dp and four dimensional dp as well anyways so that was 
all what online assessment looked like i cleared the online assessment test i was able to like solve both the coding questions i think i also got all of the mcqs right and in the debugging question i was only able to i think solve one problem and eventually i got the interview call so let's see how the interview looked like so uh I mean, at TRC, the interview procedure is like this, that every interview round is a elimination round. I mean, if you won't clear a particular round, then you won't move to the next round. So there comes round one. So round one comprised of theoretical questions on operating systems and computer networks. I mean, the interviewer actually went deep in these two subjects and asked a lot of questions. There were some computer architecture questions as well. I mean, in operating systems, the questions were more focused around virtual memory, man memory management schemes and page tables, thrashing, translation, lookaside buffers, caches, and uh, scheduling policy, CPU scheduling policies. There were, uh, I think these were mostly where the questions were focused. And in case you want to like uh, basically refer the resource for operating system so i had created a video which is this how to prepare for hft interviews and there i have told a book which is galvin and if you have gone through that book you can easily like clear like at least all the questions which were asked to me in this particular round i think they were straight away taken from galvin i mean if you know the concepts explained in that particular book regarding virtual memory and memory management schemes you can clear this particular round because the the questions asked were mostly applications of those concepts only and then in computer networks the questions were mostly focused around transmission tcp protocol and udp protocol then in data structure algorithms there was a one binary search question so for that particular question there is a blog or a tutorial given on top coder regarding binary search if you have gone through that tutorial you can actually uh clear that i mean you can easily solve that particular question let me actually find out i will uh link i will basically link that particular tutorial in the description section of the video but yeah again that binary search is a very uh, that binary search technique is very commonly known so i was able to clear this particular round then i moved to round two the round two was totally focused on C++. There were two interviewers and they grilled me on C++ only. So the questions around C++ were mostly based on virtual methods, the inline, like there were some optimization techniques which were asked, like there are certain problems with virtual methods, certain performance problems. So we discussed that. I mean, I won't reveal the actual questions, but one resource which you can go through is this particular video on cppcon which is the hidden performance price of c++ virtual functions if you have gone through this 49 minutes video i mean if you know and understand the concepts explained in this particular video you can easily answer all those questions so yeah then there were discussion around lock free data structures like the interviewer asked the producer consumer problem now there are various ways to solve the producer consumer problem he was mostly focused on a solution which used lock free queues in case you do not know what lock free data structures are then again you can go through this you can watch actually this particular video which is lock free uh, data structures on cppcon let me actually find that video so you can watch this particular video so yeah this is the video the speed of concurrency is lock free faster and there is this video one video as well live lock free or deadlock part one and part two and yeah, this one as well, the C++ Atomics from basic to advanced. So log free data structures are usually implemented using C++ Atomics only. So if you have watched these three videos, I think you can easily answer all those questions. Then in C++, there were questions around pointers. Like for answering those questions, you should actually understand. Yeah, like you should have a good understanding of pointers and references. Apart from that, you should also understand that, let's say you have an array of any type. And when you write array i, so what it basically translates to behind the scene. So basically, if let's say the array was of integer type, so array i basically means that you are dereferencing the dereferencing the the present on this ith location. So that is computed something like this i i multiplied by size of int. So you should actually understand that the writing array of i means this. Similarly, let's say this array was of some employee type which is a custom class then this size of will be replaced by that so yeah again like <laughs> these are the concepts of pointers in c++ uh, and i think that is mostly it i do not remember if they asked any other questions on c++ but these were the areas where they grilled me a lot 
and yeah there were some ob- object oriented programming questions as well in c++ so yeah then came the round 3 i mean i was also i did not do very well in this particular round but i was still able to clear it i moved to round 3 in round 3 the interview started with the interview started by asking some puzzles and i was able to answer all of them i i mean in some puzzles for answering some puzzles i did need some hint from the interviewer but i was able to solve them so yeah one thing is that as well that you should you know keep a eye on the hints which in the interviewer is giving and you know try to think or you know why those hints are given to you and try to use them to build solutions usually people try ignore those hints but yeah that is not actually a very good thing to do then eventually there was a data structure and gordham questions i was able to solve and code it then i moved to in round 4 in round 4 there were two hiring managers so they discussed about my project at de show so my project discussion at de show was also held in round 1 as well i mean the interviewer who took round 1 he also discussed about my project at de show then there were some c++ questions like they asked me to implement the std string class like how would you write your own std string and yeah one more thing is that in round 2 uh where i was like which totally focused on c++ questions there was questions on smart pointers as well which is uh they mostly focused on how std shared ptr is implemented behind the scenes so for actually reading or understanding that you can actually go through a book which i have exp- uh, given in this particular video how to prepare for hft interview so i have described a book called effective modern c++ by scott myers so there is a chapter in that book totally dedicated to smart pointers you can read that and you will all have all the answers which were asked to the questions which were asked in this round so yeah again smart pointers are very important for c++ then there were some behavioral interview questions and then there were some questions based on team and cultural fit i eventually moved to round 5 where there was another hiring manager he told me about his team like what kind of work they do and he asked some basic team fit questions then and he was i think pretty impressed with me and he actually tried to convince me in that particular interview that why i should join his team why the work his team is doing is actually aligned to my goals and the work which i have done in the past and how you know both of us will benefit from my past experience so yeah i eventually uh, had made up my mind that i will join this guy's team only and then i finally got the job offer and i think in the job offer the hiring manager of around 5 was present and he uh like what like they gave me the compensation numbers and there there were negotiations and discussions around that and i think that was mostly it for my interview experience at tower search capital so i hope you guys like this video please do not forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time